We're the two gay reapers. Hey reapers, we're back. Woo. It's been a while. It hasn't been that long to be honest, but it has been a few weeks. It's been a nice relaxing, just time to Reflect. Reflect, unwind. It's been a good break for us. We really, really needed it. We needed that uh, just that separation from having to do videos every single week, the stress that's involved in those. Just want to put a big thank you to everyone out there who gave their support over the last uh, couple of weeks, couple of months. All your comments uh, are much like, greatly appreciated. So. And we miss doing this as well. We, so. do. <laughs> we do love doing this. It is, it is something that we enjoy doing. As you know, before we left, we were having a few difficulties with Reefzilla, Gordon's Predator tank, pretty much everything. The jar was going well. <laughs> the jar's still doing well. We did film a little bit just before we took the break. Uh, we never actually put that video out, so uh, let's play that now. Flashback. We're doing a Reefzilla update. Now, we haven't updated this since... End of March? End of March. Our wedding? Yep. yep. So, it's been a long time, a lot has happened, a lot has changed. Ups and downs, ins and outs. Downs. <laughs> more downs and ups, unfortunately. We've been following our videos, we, you've seen all the stuff that we've put on Tarifzilla. Hasn't necessarily made it better yet. <laughs> no, but I think we've gone too much tech and sort of made it too hard to handle. That's my opinion. My opinion is that it's actually exposed issues that were already there and now we're on the way to fixing them. Yep. Yep. So basically, the first piece of equipment that we put on was the Reef Wave. Really love the Red Sea Reef Wave. Absolutely fantastic. Does a fantastic job and I think it did too good of a job, to be honest. It basically tore through our sand bed. Our sand bed previously, you could tell there was no flow because it had a nice carpet of creeping algae on it, really. The fish loved it. Yeah, they're always picking at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, you um, could tell it wasn't a healthy sand bed. No. But as soon as we put the reef wave on, it basically tore through that. It turned it over like nobody's business. I think though, turning over the sand bed that it actually turned over crap that was settling in the sand bed. We then got a bit of an algae outbreak, some of that horrible brown algae that we usually get, coupled this time with a bit of cyano. Yay. Don't look at my tank at the moment. <laughs> I have red sand. <laughs> so yeah, it never got that bad, but you can see the sand bed is a lot better now. One of the things we've also done to maintain the sand now is we're actually vacuuming it with water changes, which we've never done before. Which is probably why when the Red Sea turned it over, it actually got a lot of crap out of the sand bed. Yeah. And then now we're actually starting to gravel back it for the first time in, well, ever. Yeah. We didn't even own a gravel back. We had to go buy one. <laughs> we had to go buy a gravel back. How bad is that? Yep. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I think it was a case of exposing an issue that was already there. Just like when we bought the Neptune earlier in the year, it's exposing issues that are already there. So the next thing that we we turned on, probably not so much we got it, because we've had it for quite a while, but we finally got around to turning it on, was the calcium reactor. Yep, yep. so the calcium reactor was doing all right. It started behaving unpredictably as well, and causing lots of algae spikes. The main issue we had there was I had too much flow coming back out of the calcium reactor and not enough coral in the tank to actually suck up the alk. So it was just all over the place. We've dialed in the calcium reactor so it's barely a trickle now and we've just left it on and it's been on now for a solid week at the same amount. It, the elk sort of been still has been sort of jumping up and down a bit but the spikes have just been like this, not like this. So but then occasionally you'll have one big spike. Yeah, and we, we've sort of worked out that the, that the salinity was changing consistently. No, it was changing all the time. Erratically, so, probably the better word. Yeah, erratically. erratically. So, so that's what we've done in it. last week's video. We put on an ATO. The ATO we had just was dumping water in like nobody's It business. was a cheap $50 ATO from a fish shop that was just there to it, it, it worked out the level level of drop it dumped people water in yeah 
Obviously salinity is linked to alkalinity. You can't have a stable alkalinity without a stable salinity. The graph has gone from going like this to sort of which is a lot better. Yep. <laughs> Just want to stop the video there and say that we thought we had salinity under control it really hasn't been unfortunately and that's because of the ato now we've been struggling with the ato for quite some time for a month or two uh, what can i say it was driving me insane i think one day we had up to 200 alarms on the neptune ato and last night i cracked it looked it in it, took it apart, found that it was blocked. So there was not enough water coming out to fill up, hence causing the alarm because it was trying to fill so much and then it just time out basically. So yay, but I'm pretty confident we now have salinity under control. Back to the video. So now we just have to make sure that our alk starts doing the same thing. Yeah. The algae reactor though has been really good. It's actually reducing the nitrates in the tank quite substantially. Our phosphates have started to come down. They were over one at one stage. Last two items are basically salinity and alkalinity. If we can get that, hopefully things will start coming along nicely. We bought a tank with some tech already on it and if we'd set it up properly with some of our own stuff at the start, we probably wouldn't have had these issues. Yeah. But we're getting there. <laughs> One thing it hasn't affected at all is the fish. The fish are so happy, so healthy, so fat. All the fish are doing really well. End of flashback. So Reefzilla is settling down, it's getting there. We have lost probably about 50% of our corals, I would say. Some of that is due to, we still have fluctuating alk, and that is due to the calcium, rea calcium reactor. <laughs> I think it's not pressurized enough at all. At all. Yeah. The, I think the concept of that reactor is good. Um, I don't think in practice it's been designed very well. We've decided that we're actually going to get rid of that reactor uh, and replace it with a, a different reactor. Something that's been known to work. Yeah, so that's right. That's coming up very soon. But besides the ALK, everything else on Reef Seal of the parameters are pretty good. Like, temperature's finally good. Salinity. We have stable salinity. Yay! Basically, we've just had this big ALK spike about what, two weeks before we filmed this, and that's what's the issue at the moment. We've also had a bit of an issue with our aquascape, so... <laughs> no fish were harmed. No fish were harmed, but somehow. <laughs> somehow, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. what happens when you take out a supporting coral. Duncan. <laughs> yeah. Good thing is we've sat back and actually made a plan for them. So besides the calcium reactor, in the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to re-aquascape Reefzilla. So it's gonna be a brand new look. We've got a few other little projects that we won't say too much about now. But here's a last look at Reefzilla as it was. If you've enjoyed today's video, like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be excellent to each other and keep it salty, everyone. Bye for now. See you guys.
Uh, I'm just here. <laughs> Don't be like that. <laughs> I'm gonna do a second song.